This is the market square in Baranów, which is in southeast Poland, not so far from Tarnobrzeg. It's a town of 1,500 inhabitants, noted for its castle, which we'll be having a look at a little later. In fact, it's a palace. Uh, the one we've got down there is, in fact, the town hall. But for people who know about the Second World War, it's noted for the Baranów Bridgehead, which was on the other side of the Vistula River, which is a few hundred meters uh, down that road there. And that was one of the jumping off points for the January Vistula to Oda offensive in January 1945. But the uh, Soviets got across the river here in the summer of 1944. I'll probably talk about that a bit later. This is the Market Square and I originally parked my vehicle there right next to that red one but I happened to notice a couple of gentlemen who seemed to be a bit ebriationally challenged so I thought I'd move it on and also parking your van in the main square is never a good idea. I mean even though there's only 1,500 people living here some of them may have cars like that gentleman there where the silencer needs a bit of work on. All the same, as you can see, I just moved it that right down there through the heart and there's my vehicle. This is the castle at Baranov Palace, really. It took around 15 years or so to build from around 1591. So a few words about Santi Gucci who built this place. He was born around 1530 in Florence. He turned up in Poland around 1550, so he'd been around 20 years old, and this was due to ties with the Polish royal family. Now, this place would have been one of the last things he did, as he, in fact, uh, died before it was uh, finished. But it must be one of his crowning uh, glories. He lived in Pinchuv, he had a studio there, but he designed lots of things, including things which are in the Vavo in Krakow. And this place is even called the Little Vavo, and it sort of, sort of looks a little bit like that inside the courtyard, I think as well as out from the outside. Quite magnificent. He also designed possibly the uh, cathedral in Pinchu. He did the uh, that palace which is on the side of the river from Kazimierz Dolna. Um, and quite lots of other things as well. The castle's been open since 1997 to the public. Uh, it's got, you can see it's got a restaurant, but it's got some museum things uh, in the underground part. Not all of the castle is open to the public. But behind me, there is a hotel. It had quite a lot of artwork inside, but it was destroyed in two fires. The second of which was in 1898, which also took a large part of the town with it as well. I see that we need to have a guide.
the park is 16 hectares. This is the hotel. Also, I noticed that you can actually sleep in the palace as well. This is the church. So this dates to 1604. Barano was noted for being a centre of Calvinism. Also had a sizeable Jewish population. In fact, down half the town was Jewish when Poland became independent. But uh, the Jewish population actually fell during the time of the Second Republic in the interwar period. And of course, the po Jewish population was murdered during the Second World War. Now, it's the World Youth Days on at the moment. And as you can see from this sign, it's from the 20th to 25th of July 2016. And then crack of 25th to 31st of July 2016. Today is the 22nd of July. And let's have a look inside. Well, the door has been shut to keep the riffraff out. So we'll have a quick look down. Very ornate. I can't get in. Now, a lot of money was spent doing this place up in order to attract tourists here. So this is the middle of July and well, I seem to be alone. But all the same, uh, this is a very attractive village. Well, I say, I seem to be alone. I'm only one walking on the streets. Although there were plenty of people at the hotel in the castle when I was there last night. As an added attraction, you can take the ferry. Now there's a bridge only three or four kilometers upstream, but when you got on the ferry, it's got a certain style to it and makes it uh, your trip a little bit more exciting, I think. And there's the Vistula River, which divides Poland in two. Now, 18 years ago, I wrote an article about the difficulties of the transport which the Vistula River caused, particularly when bridges were out. It's no longer the case as there are many more bridges since then. And a little bit up there is the place where the Red Army crossed the Vistula on the 30th of July 1944. They forded it because it's very wide but it's not very deep. I've even seen somebody walk across the Vistula and that was just south of Warsaw, a long way upstream. Anyway, today I'm not going to go there. And as you can see, it's pretty quiet.